Hello and welcome to Learning Is That Quiet presents Sound Energy. Today we're going to talk about all the complexities with compression waves, with sound and how it interacts with matter, how it needs matter to function. We're going to talk about pitch. We're going to talk about amplitude. We're going to use my handy dandy guitar as an example. So without further ado, let's begin. Just as a note, teachers and parents, if you are finding this video on YouTube and would like the accompanying worksheet to go with it, check the description, links to my Teachers Pay Teachers store for activities that go with this video as well as the specific worksheet that goes with this video are found there. Let's begin. This is a particular organism right here that creates quite a bit of sound energy, don't you? Yeah. But enough about that. So students, key thing. Just so you know, anytime you see an all caps word, such as waves and vibrating on this slide, note that that word is really important. It is something that you should be either writing down in a blank if you have a paper worksheet, or it's probably an answer to a question if you're doing this as a digital worksheet. Let's begin. Sound is energy moving as waves vibrating through substances. So vibrating is those tiny little uh, movements that something makes that creates the sound. So I'm going to try to show this on my guitar here. We'll see how successful this is, especially with the dog. But if I play my guitar, you can see that string on my E string moving back and forth really, really fast. So those tiny motions are called vibrations. And what's happening here is as it's vibrating, it's echoing throughout this empty chamber in my guitar and that sound wave is traveling to my ears and my ears are interpreting that information as a particular sound and my dog is barking that's a whole different kind of sound that's traveling in compression waves to my ears and I'm translating that as my dog is being super annoying right now so vibrations Sound waves bounce off of matter. Sound cannot travel without matter. Very, very important. So all of those Star Wars movies that you see where spaceships are magically making sound in outer space, not possible. It cannot happen in outer space. You need to have matter for things to make sound. Now, obviously when astronauts are in outer space, things are bouncing off the matter of their spaceship and so they can hear that. But we as the viewer watching the spaceship traveling through, completely scientifically inaccurate, even though I love Star Wars. So sound waves bounce off of matter. That's how they're, they're formed and that's how they function and they cannot travel without matter. In the case of my dog making her noise, that is the vocal cords in her voice box that are making that sound. They're vibrating against each other. They're hitting each other. In my guitar, it's these strings, right? It's them moving back and forth really, really fast. Waves. Sound waves are also called compression or longitudinal waves. So these parts of the wave that are pushed close together are called compressions. The parts of the wave that they're pushed further apart are called rarefractions. So compression is when a longitudinal, also known as a compression wave, are pushed together. Rarefraction are when they're spread apart. So we have, do it with me in your hands. I know it makes you look kind of silly doing this to a talking lady on the computer, but I promise it will help you learn. Compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. Compression, refraction. So these are how sound waves travel. Sometimes I see images of sound waves and they're like this, going up and down. Those are for light waves only. Compression waves move back and forth like this. All right, moving on. We have matter. Matter has an effect on sound. Sound actually travels the fastest through solids and the slowest through gases. Let me repeat that again because it's so important. Sound travels the fastest through solids and the slowest through gases. Okay, so kind of a way that you can think about this is, remember in a solid, my particles are closer together, right? And if you need a review on this, there's plenty of other videos on my channel. But solid particles are closer together. Liquid particles are a little bit further apart. Gas particles are much further apart. So what's actually happening, let's pretend this is one atom, this is another atom. In a compression wave, these atoms are transferring their mechanical energy or their movement energy from one to the other. Boop. 
And then this guy, he's now vibrating. He goes and passes it off to someone else. And this happens really, really fast, like in a matter of milliseconds from it making the sound to it entering our brain. So it makes sense that in a solid, if they are closer together, that those atoms could be able to transfer that sound energy faster. And if they're in a gas, it takes longer for them to reach each other and therefore pass that sound energy along. Pitch. Now, if you play an instrument, this is a sound that's very familiar to you. Pitch is how high or low a note is with sound energy. Faster frequencies mean higher pitches. Faster frequencies mean higher pitches. I just kind of want to show you a, and listen to this kind of a model. So we have a low frequency sound. Now it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. That's how sound energy works in the most awfully sounding singing I've ever done in my entire life. But it starts off low and it's slow moving. High pitch is fast moving. Low. High. Perfect, right? Now you can annoy all of the people in your family with that wonderful singing sound. This is not what a sound wave looks like, but I think it does a really good job of showing low pitch moving slow, high pitch moving fast. But remember, sound waves don't go up and down, they go back and forth. All right, so now we're going to talk about amplitude. How high the amplitude of a sound is determines how loud the sound is or volume. Decibels is the unit we use to measure how loud a sound is. Let's take a look at this on the guitar. So you may have noticed on your instrument, any instrument that you play, that the thinner part or the smaller part corresponds to the higher pitches. And the thicker strings, the bigger part of the instrument, those correspond correspond to lower pitches right and that makes sense because if we have bigger matter that means that it takes longer for it to vibrate and it's going to create a slower moving sound which is a lower pitch and if things are closer together this is kind of like a tuba and if things are closer together that matter is going to travel much faster and be a higher pitch so how that relates to amplitude right that's about how fast the wave is moving how big that wave is corresponds to amplitude. So this would be like low amplitude, very quiet, very shallow waves, high amplitude, much louder sound. Okay, and last thing that we need to talk about with sound is sonar. Sonar is a way scientists use sound energy to locate things based on how waves bounce off matter. And the way that animals use this is echolocation. So sonar is basically echolocation, but for scientists. That is it on sound energy. Let's do a brief review. So sound waves are also called longitudinal waves because they're long or compression waves because they have compressions and rarefactions. The part of the wave that's close together, that's a compression. The part that's spread apart is a rarefaction. So compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. This is a sound wave. This is a light wave. Sound wave, light wave. Sound wave, light wave. Okay? Pitch is determined by how fast or the frequency of that wave. So if we have a low pitch, that means that that sound wave is moving slower. And if we have a high pitch, that means it's moving faster. That's why I need the guitar so I don't have to sing. Um, low pitch is a slower moving sound wave or a lower frequency. High pitch is a faster moving wave or a higher frequency. We have amplitude, which determines how loud our sound is going to be. So if we have a quiet sound, that's a really loud amplitude. If we have a loud sound, I mean, learning is not quiet we have a really high amplitude, which means our wave is bigger. When we think about matter, sound needs matter to travel. I can't make any sound as much as I want to on my air guitar. I need the matter of my strings and the air in my chamber to make this noise, to make these compression waves. And then sound travels differently through different kinds of matter. Because the particles are closer together in a solid, sound travels faster. Because they're further apart in a gas, sound travels slower. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me on Learning Is That Quiet. Adios.